Good morning. My name is Michael Leeserman here with the Trial Guide's Tip of the Day this middle of the week, Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. Today's tip comes from Polarizing the Case, Exposing and Defeating the Malingering Myth by Rick Friedman. Here to read the tip is Rick Friedman. Good morning, Rick. Morning, Michael. Thank you. Closing argument is the time you get to hold the defense accountable for its attacks on the plaintiff. What they've done is despicable. Time to point that out. So what the defense has done is despicable. You point that out. Um, you're not someone, frankly, I'm not either, that's known for um, uh, screaming and yelling <laughs> in front of the jury. So, yeah. so how do you do this? Well, you know, as the quote came up, I was thinking about how important timing and tone is and how, um, you know, every case is different. There's no formula for this, but often it's only as the trial has progressed that it becomes clear to everybody what the defense theme is. Your client's a liar, a cheat, and a fraud. And so, yeah, it's in, it's in close. Uh, I tend to hold back, not always, but most of the time, uh, hold back on really pointing out, uh, how despicable it is until, um, till closing. And then, yeah. And then it can be very straightforward and matter of fact, and doesn't have to be histrionic. It can just be, you know, over the last two weeks, we've seen what the defense is. The defense is that Mrs. Smith is a liar, a cheat and a fraud. And if that's true, you should send her out of here with nothing because she doesn't deserve it and she should be ashamed of herself. But if she's telling the truth, and then I might list some of the evidence that she's telling the truth, uh, what the defense does has done is despicable and they should be ashamed of themselves. And uh, she's entitled to a fair award uh, based on the evidence. And here's what the evidence shows. So that's, that's the shorthand version of what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, it's brilliant because it's to the point. It's matter of fact, you can't really argue with it. You're revealing yourself saying, if that's the case, you know, it's not what the jury expects you to say, then send her home with nothing. Um, right. And you know, there's, um, there's something else in it, which is, um, the way you say it. And I think every trial or has to find their own voice but the way you say it you're not taking the anger from the jury you're you're right. angry but you're not so angry that they don't have space to say what do you mean son you know let yeah. them get angry well yeah i mean that's the whole uh induced emotion thing right if you are having all the emotion there's no room for the jury to have emotion so yeah i think you, you got to show you care by the time of closing, at least you have to show you care and you have to show what you think of it, but you know, it can be pretty subtle. It doesn't have to be table pounding and screaming to get the point across. Well, thank you for this book, Polarizing the Case. If you, uh, you're listening to this and don't have it, you should go out and get it. Um, and thank you for, for watching what you do. Um, so well and being willing to share it with others so others can go out and help uh, clients and help make this a better world. Well, thank you for having me, Michael. Let's take a moment together to take a deep breath and appreciate the fact that we're alive today. Let's be grateful for the fact that as lawyers or paralegals or whatever our jobs may be, that we have the opportunity to help reduce suffering in the world. May we, in our efforts today, help repair the world. May we fiercely and compassionately advocate for our clients and champion their stories. I'm going to ring a bell three times now. This can take you into a meditation practice, into a prayer practice, or just let the sound of the bell wash over you and remind you it's Wednesday. Wake up. Be grateful to be alive. Go out, do good things and have fun while you're doing it. Have a great day.